Today's New Year's Eve, and this is Life on the Lotto number 25. Alright folks, today we are bringing you a PvP. My name is Silvertone, and welcome to Life on the Ladder. Our red Protoss player, his name is McCanning. Our blue Protoss player, his name is Josh in the Box, a.k.a. Qualia. We have a game between, I believe, Qualia. The email said, the email I received this replay, and said this is Team Ascension Competitive's uh, Qualia. Now, I have no confirmation of that, and I wanted to double check with him before I did it, but I also wanted to get this PvP in before the new year, man. Today is New Year's Eve. Is December 31st. And this is going to be the last episode of Life on the Ladder for the new year. Flipside Gaming over here, mechanic. I know very little about PvP, guys, so we're going to be doing a lot of shout casting, a lot of learning. I'm going to be trying to pick up on maybe any kind of little things they're doing that I don't know about, which is going to be a lot. So let's see what kind of perspective we get. I'm obviously not going to be super knowledgeable, but we're going to try to see what we can pick up together. We have, I believe, a Nexus first. Yeah, Nexus first for Qualia. In Heart of the Swarm, as far as I know, that was a no-no. All you got to do is scout, see that it's happening, and then just forgate the guy. So in Legacy of the Void, we have both players shooting for super early Nexuses. I believe Josh in the Boxes was a little bit earlier. Looks he went. Looks like. Um, McCanning went Gateway and then Nexus, and then Qualia, a little greedier, went Nexus and then Gateway. Sounds like not a big deal, but if you're going to do an all-in, it might make a big difference. Both players shooting for the double gas. Looks like we're going to have, again, both players going double Gateway. So if you're wondering how to play a standard game, I believe this is Masters vs. Grandmasters. Um, Josh in the box might even be Qualia. I'm not sure if Qualia is Grandmasters or not. So as far as we know, this is Grandmasters vs. Masters. And the meta for that, for PvP right now, looks like they're going to go Nexus, Gateway, Double Gas, Gateway. And what I think that's going to mean is either Double Soccer Production or Double Adept Production. Both players waiting to make their units until their Cybernetics cores are finished. Thank you guys again for joining us today on Life on the Ladder. I appreciate everyone stopping by, checking out my replays. We're getting closer and closer to 100 subscribers, and that is super exciting to me. I'm only a couple hundred views away from my first 10,000 views, and that feels nice. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that in the year of 2016, I'll be able to completely keep up a consistent schedule, and when I'm not, I'll be putting up update videos because yeah, I made that mistake last month. I didn't I didn't drop the um the update video during the month that I took off. We do have double adept production coming out from both players. Now I'm used to playing on completely low graphics. That's how I play, man. I play completely low graphics. No details, nothing to distract me, and when I'm casting, I'm trying to turn the graphics all the way up. I've noticed that they haven't changed completely, like they're definitely better than the ones that I play on. No doubt about that. But I'm not convinced that even, like hitting Ultra is turning them all the way up to Ultra, man. I feel like I'm still missing out on some things. Gotta figure that one out. These Adepts are making their way across the map. You can see their pretty little shields. Uh, I think they're shields, that's what I think they are. <laughs> on their backs. They're running, they're running the marathon, they're going at it. We have an Oracle out now. What's here to defend? These are going to slip in. A really nice use of the Cyanic, cyanic Transfer is what I believe it's called. Um, to get in, make sure it's safe to run in. It looks like they're going to get some serious probe kills, and that's a big deal. The Oracle is going to fly in from the north east. And one probe after another is going to be eaten away. Photon overcharge on that pylon. Going to fend away the Oracle. Oracle just pushed out of range, though. And it's still picking up kills. Oh, it's going to go down. So that is a really big deal. The Adepts from our, from our blue player, Qualia Josh in the box, 
they're gonna slip in and get a couple more probe kills down and it looks like workers killed is gonna be about even nine to eight one in favor of qualia the stargate is all but finished for uh, oh my god is this a double stargate or what where's your the stargate there it is so i believe we're gonna see double stargate out of qualia and Oh man, I'm, I'm slipping up. McCanning is going to go for that robotics bay. He's got his, his observers out. Going to go for another one. Guys, I want to point out, I want to go back a little bit. When he sent in his adepts, he didn't just walk into the base. He used the psionic transfer, which you can cancel, uh, to send his, his guys in, which allows him to enter the base scot-free, no, no risk. Send him in. If there's, if there's an army waiting, cancel him. Run home. Just get the scout. If there's not, you're in the base. So here comes the Observer. Third base down for both players. This is like, if you're looking how to play this version of the meta, both players playing almost exactly the same, except with their tech change being different, is an awesome, awesome way to do it, guys. Double forge down for Mechanic. He's got both forges coming in. Just one forge, it looks like. Oh, it finished up. Where is it? Just one forge for Josh in the box, a.k.a. Qualia. My brain can't seem to settle on one or the other. I thought this was double Stargate, but I only see one Stargate. <laughs> it's a robotics bay. Or facility. Yeah, facility. I think. The Phoenix swiping around through the back. There's stalkers waiting for them. Photon overcharge was used to bounce away those Phoenix. Phoenix trying to get some damage done. Looks like they got a couple more kills. No. Yeah, a couple more kills there. Maybe two. The Templar Archives is all finished up. A couple more gateways are being added on. Plus one uh, for both players is being upgraded. We got Zealot Charge and Immortals on the way for Qualia. This observer in a decent position, getting a scout off on the surrounding area, probably, let's see. He can see that much. It's really not the greatest scout in the world, but it's, it's enough. It's more than nothing. One phoenix almost eating it, but not gonna eat it. Immortal still in production. He's gonna go phoenix, immortal, charge, zealot. A really, really interesting composition I haven't seen before. PvP is one of the craziest matchups. ZvZ ends really fast. It's almost all. It's almost always the same. Uh, Macro ZvZ is kind of a, of a strange, uh, the, the weird stepchild. You never see it. TBT always been a chess ma match. Now it's all just non-stop harass type stuff, positioning and uh, dropping and all that kind of awesome stuff. But PvP, I think, is probably the most changed mirror matchup in uh, StarCraft 2 from Heart of the Swarm to Legacy of the Void. We're going to see the back rocks knock down. Let's see if he's knocking his. No, not knocking his down yet. He adds on what I believe is six gateways. Is this six? Yes, yeah, six freaking gateways. Plus two, plus two, almost exactly the same time. If you guys were wondering, it's at about, about eight minutes. Both of these players are going for plus two melee. I don't have melee, do they? They're not, they're not Zerg. I'm used to Zerg. So plus one ground weapons. We'll just go with that. We have Templar on the map. No Archons yet. And it looks like he's going to try to use Storm. I don't know how I feel again about Storm versus Zealot Immortal Phoenix. That's an awesome composition though, that's for sure. He's adding an Archon. That's kind of awesome. Storm now being upgraded. The composition. Right now, I'd say the composition is heavily favoring Qualia. It's very much like, you know, charge in, use the immortals. You have Archons to buffer. He's moving out right now. One zealot sitting here is going to see. Hey guys, uh, they're on their way. Um, the Phoenix are going to be the most microable thing here besides the Warp Prism. And the composition for our Red Protoss player. Guys, he does not have Storm yet. If this timing attack hits in the next 20 seconds, it'll hit before Storm Storm finishes. It looks like they both might... He might wait for plus two, but I don't know. 
I don't know. It looks like he's really close to moving in. Plus two. Storm's now finished. Plus two probably has another another 20 seconds on it. We have two disruptors, and those are going to be essential for McCanning. He needs to land really nice disruptor hits if he wants to keep the army at bay. Uh, besides that, the stalkers are going to have to do all the DPS. Both players here positioning, posturing, getting ready for the engagement. The disruptors get lifted by the Phoenix. They're not even get shots off. And now we see a big battle in the third base of McCanning. Immortals working down gateways probably should be focusing on something else. Now they're working on the pylons. The stalkers are busy with the archons and the zealots. The war prism, where is that war prism? It's back in the back of the of the army. Not no, there you go. There are the war pins. He's gonna reinforce that force. Reinforce that force. Disruptor sending out a shot. Really essential. Gubble zealots go down, but not a huge amount of units taken out with that splash damage and the stalkers now are kiting up into the natural immortals sitting in the back gg is called by mccanning and team ascension's competitive uh team qualia also known as josh in the box takes the game now uh, PvP is not my expertise. Um, PvT, is that what I said? PvP. PvP is not my expertise. Um, but I think that game is really strong proof that that build is common. So let's just uh, remind all the Protoss players out there what that was. You either start out with a Nexus or a Gateway, then you go double gas, then you make another Gateway. <laughs> Um, as soon as your first gateway finishes, drop your cybernetics core, and you're going to want to pump out two adepts as fast as you can. Use those adepts to scout and to harass. Behind the two gateways, behind the two adepts, you're going to want to drop either a robotics bay um, or a stargate. And in doing that, you're choosing if you want to scout further with an observer into immortals, or and then into disruptor probably or if you're trying to go for an oracle into a robo because right now disruptors in PvP uh, as far as I know are super common um, very meta um, and not the hardest to use but if you miss if they get picked up by Phoenix um, you're gonna have a hard time again in this matchup or in any matchup really the disruptor disruptor hits once you've made the disruptors they kinda have to be effective you can't just let them, let them die because instead of getting instead of getting Colossus or more immortals you got disruptors. So remember to use your splash damage uh, well. Remember that Storm is really, really good, but for instance, he got hit uh, with an army that Storm didn't do much against. Immortals are not going to acknowledge Storm too much. The Zelts are going to be on top of your army. The Phoenix and Archons are going to be also pretty close to your army. But yeah. I'm going to be trying to cast more PvP and more Protoss perspective matches, even if I don't have Red with me. Uh, you leak Red if you guys don't know my co-caster. Um, purely because I need to know that matchup better, and I learned I learned a lot today. Hopefully I will be seeing more Protoss builds, especially PvP, because that's where the real meat, if you ask me, is. If you want to see a Protoss matchup, or how Protosses like to play, watch their mirror matchup. Um, it's unforgiving. Hope you guys have a great New Year's. It is New Year's Eve, so get your uh, your champagne glasses ready and uh, get the person you're going to kiss at midnight ready and have a good night. Banshees right now. Tessor does not play games with the number of Banshees he's using. Banshees trying to make it out alive. These corruptors are attempting to ruin that dream. It looks like they're going to catch at least one. Possibly two. Oh god, here comes a small battle. Engagement on the way. Queens caught out of position a little bit. The crew tumors are going to be totally disposed of. Via, there's a one raven in this, in this mix detecting everything. A nice, if you guys didn't see this, there was a, an overlord spreading creep, which the queen spread tumors underneath. That's a nice touch. 
Here come the, the queens, the lings, the corruptors. There's fungals on everything. They're all up in a ball. And it looks like the whole army is going to go down to fungals. 